Let's have a look at their side and the significant return of Captain Mark Coynes. He partners Graham Bradley, the deputy captain, who did a fine job in Coyne's absence. And uh, Gordon Tallis in the forward line is uh, arguably the, the best forward going around in the game at the moment. Brian Smith, the coach, and of course they'll be trying to win for him because he leaves the club at the end of the season no matter what. The Bulldogs, and there they are, with McCracken on the bench, Glenn Hughes in the centres, and of course the notable absentee again is Jason Smith, a player that they would dearly love to have out there today. Who's your tip, Rebs? Saints. Easily? No. No, it should be a great game. Of course, down on the sideline, as usual, the big fellow, Steve Roach. Steve, what about the conditions down there? Yeah, so although we've had plenty of rain here today, Paul, the ground in great conditions. It's soaking it up pretty well. Plenty of uh, players slipping over in the earlier games, but I reckon this is going to be an outstanding game. St George, uh, sudden death, they've been playing for the last eight weeks. I don't see anything different today. And plenty of loose ball I saw in the earlier games block. Uh, ball control, the order of the day. Yes, it is. Well, St George are experts at the short passing game. I think they're a lot better struck then the uh, the Canterbury Banks downside they play a bit of ad lib football and it's a big day for the forwards today I think uh, Jason Stevens will lead the way and as Ray said Gordon Tallis virtually unstoppable well you enjoy yourself down there big fellow I think Saints can sneak home here today in this sudden death quarter final sit back relax we're back after the break with all the action Back at the Sydney Football Stadium, the rain continuing to fall, not heavily, but uh, damp conditions apply. The St George supporters huddled under the protection of what there is here at the Sydney Football Stadium. Headquarters of Rugby League, and we are in weekend one. Another elimination quarterfinal coming up. St George and the Sydney Bulldogs. One will continue, one will survive. Saints, of course, in recent times, been to the grand final. They went down to Brisbane in consecutive years, 92-93. Of course, uh, the Bulldogs were there only last year. The Bulldogs with Parramatta shared the spotlight of grand finals during the 80s. We have here today neighbouring clubs, great clubs. And uh, since 1935, head-to-head -head shows us that the Dogs... 149, St George 73, there's been five years. So the great Terry Lamb takes out the blue and whites. He plays game 323 today. Dream in rugby league. To captain a grand final winning side. These two sides clashed in the 1993 series. St George were en route to the grand final. I remember their tactic well. They aimed their first half, their first half attacking raid straight at Terry Lamb. He'd made more than 20 tackles at half time. St. George, happy that Mark Quinn is back. The red and whites, the famous Saints, second only on the honor roll to the mighty South Sydney. Come with a great run to make the quarters there's the man Mark Coyne, Jason Stevens, the 10 the diminutive Rod Maybon as is Noel Goldthorpe I wonder with the conditions as they are and with Maybon being very small will they not be putting plenty of uh, high kicks into the end goal David Barnhill He's strong in the forwards the Saints Barnhill, Stevens, Goulet We've discussed Tallis. Eddie Ward is the man in charge. We deduce that Ward is at number one, Manson at number two at the moment. St. George right to left. And the second elimination quarterfinal is underway with the Bulldogs' first use of the football. And that is Gillies just beyond his 20-metre line. Hetherington losing his footing. A sign of things to come, maybe. Rain has been falling lightly in Sydney right through the day. East to northeast winds, 20 degrees forecast. As we go into the first stanza of this match, first set of six, first use of the football, and Terry Lamb 
drives it down inside the St George 30 metre line and there's Maybon taken by the youthful Glenn Hughes and Brett Dallas that is Donnelly the winger been in and out of first grade He's a very strong player that's Bartram plays at the back of the scrum for St George and find Barnhill unloading through Brown and a break Mundine he's opened them up good work Stevens to get there Mundine keeps it alive now it's Zisti fends away from Timo oh there was the line wide open still a chance here for the Dragons Brown rolls it in it's a try he lost it an inquiring look by Mundine oh, a tragedy for the Saints magnificent break made through a David Barnhill offload and then this little kick on the end of it here's it players with an offload like this are worth their weight in goal let me tell you creates all sort of opportunities and Mundine made the most of it right up the middle there some more work by Mundine great opening stands are by him as this he nearly got there looked to throw the pass and hung on to it I thought the Sydney Bulldogs were all offside the penalty could have gone to Saints but a bombed opportunity for them not uh, not one opportunity but two opportunities went begging for St George Polamata keeps it low Maybon away good day for the uh, for the kick and there'll be plenty of it Polamata Lamb Goldthorpe as the ball comes free and Ward is going to put a scrum down here's a good chance coming up for the Bulldogs Donnelly the offender a three-man bulldog tackle being ripped out there no doubt about it by Glenn Hughes so it's the Bulldogs coming away from the scrum win it is Glenn Hughes in fact playing the ball there's no doubt he raked the ball away from uh, Donnelly the St George winger now 12 meters out from the Saints line this is Dean Pay. Brown hangs on with Gordon Callis. A little bit of a jostle up as they go left. And Robert Ralph plays it now, close to the line. Hetherington away. Dimmick, Dimmick. Got it away, but it's forward. Well positioned, Eddie Ward. Oh, shades of state of origin in Melbourne, that one. A Timmy Brasher try. Kimmick held it up, held it up, and then popped it. No doubt, though. Went forward, well positioned by Eddie Ward. Exciting start to this one, Steve. Yeah, it's been outstanding. There's a new understanding between the referee and the in-goal touch judge. If he stands on the dead ball line, that is a try. If he comes in the field of play, that is no try. Thank you for that. Callis. And that is flung good. down. That is good news come semi-final time. Mundine. Picked up and carried back by the Bulldogs. Big Stevens. Only a youngster. And now Gula. Saints have been hoping for Gula to take his good form through the semi-final series Goldthorpe had a marvelous game last weekend and that ball is back on the 10 meter line Daryl Halligan who went past a thousand points last weekend now Dallas comes over from his right wing and there he runs with the Callis aggressive Gordon Callis talking with players in in marvellous form what about him he take a play on the blind side and Dean Pay runs into Talis again they've already singled each other out a couple of times 32 meters out now from the Bulldogs line Dimmick turning Gillies back into the center inside ball last tackle now for Terry Lamb puts it into space it takes a right-hand turn back to Maybon 
there it's Polamounter and Timu that put St George number one to the ground but both the last times the tees have kicked on the last tackle there's been opportunities to spin the ball out wide there's been some defence lacking I think it'll only be a matter of time before the experienced players like Goldthorpe and Terry Lamb see this and spin the ball on the fifth tackle Barnhill now spirals away the pass is on for Maybon and he's tackled just inside the 40 metre line Brown at first receiver Stevens the ball carrier five tackles gone now for St George Goldthorpe kick over the top of the centres and Dallas is cut down by Mundine there they are in relation to their own line as they bring it away now through Rod Silver and Phil Gould who joined us last night the New South Wales coach is with us again today yeah Ray busy day for the wingers and fullbacks today wet weather conditions kicking's going to play a very big part interesting that Canterbury have gone with Halligan on the left wing and Brett Dallas on the right wing they like to change their wingers around Canterbury obviously Dallas on the very speedy Jason Donnelly this is the last tackle now for the Bulldogs and Lamb's kick is too full so this will be a good opportunity for the Saints the turnover 35 meters out great pressure there by Nathan Brown who came from behind to put the uh, kicker under a great deal of pressure always good tactics in wet weather football to kick before tackle five in your own half you will get a lot of pressure on tackle five from chasers you've got to kick before they're they're ready because in wet weather it's very hard to clear your own area mistake forced by the Bulldogs on the second tackle oh, good defense by them the ball came loose from the grasp of Jason Stevens well, neither team's holding back in defense there a big shoulder charge by Dean Kay on Jason Stevens who never had control of the football Stevens very slow to his feet just getting up to the scrum now Terry then working the scrum Polamounter at 5 8 and with the ball now, a cross now for the New Zealander, John Timu. Dimmick. They're just outside their own 30 metre line as they make this surge down the left of the ground. Big Darren Britt reaches the halfway line and crosses it. Hetherington calling on him for a quicker play of the ball. Through from Terry Lamb and on for Polamounter and across for Hughes. And he's tackled on the halfway line. No score on the board, eight and a half minutes gone. Timu able to get it away. Polamounter puts a kick in and just over the touchline. Dallas tried to keep it in. Again, waiting to tackle five there before the kick. In wet weather conditions, I still think it's important to kick early. The Canterbury have come up with the feed here through a deflection. Silva and St George. They've been pinched for inside the five at the scrum. Differential penalty. They go ahead and the Bulldogs, the attack snuffed out by Mark Coyne on Polamounter. Hetherington, here's the call to the right by Darren Britt. One of the Canterbury players has been polaxed. Let's have a look at this on replay. Penley will go to the Sydney Bulldogs here. Robert Ralph looming up in support. Oh, Gordon, tell us. He hasn't been sent off or put in the bin, but uh, he's been chastised by the referee with the determination on Talos's face. Well, the penalty has gone to the Sydney Bulldogs. And Talos, he may still have come out of this second, uh, second best. Trainer working on that left shoulder. Robert Ralph is off to the blood bin, courtesy of the Talos hit. And Mitch Newton has gone on. He just smashed him, didn't he? Talos. 
Harold Halligan from almost right in front gets the first points of the elimination quarter-final St. George trailing the dogs 2-0 after 10 Ralph in the blood bin Simon Gillies plays it on his own 20 metre line that is Dean Pay who's had a very strong start to the game really taken the St. George pack on this is Mitch Newton on in the place of Robert Ralph at the moment Dimmick goes ahead and Stevens is there with Goldthorpe and down around the legs is Goulet 40 metres out as Lamb again goes for the kick cross and taking it back in field and away from the sideline is Maybon Bradley scampers in and waves Donnelly out to first receiver to take it away the winger 35 off their own line St George trailing 2-0 a penalty on Tallis for taking a player not in possession out of the game Goulet operating on that corridor down the right this is Bartram now from Goldthorpe on for Brown he's found himself out in that position several times Oh, Tallis wears one from Dean Pay and doesn't like it. Gets up, pushing and shoving. Pay still on the deck. But Tallis made the half break and Pay came over the top and smashed it. There's no love loss between these two sides. Both aggressive forward packs. They've been hitting very hard in defence. And Dean Pay looking to assert some authority out there today. He's looking at close-up of those Gordon Tallis eyes he's got eyes like blocker blinking there at Dean Pay I think Dean, Dean Pay there giving Gordon Tallis a reminder that he's still around I mean Gordon Tallis has already sent one Canterbury player to the blood bin he didn't want him to think he's had a victory out of that just to let him know there was plenty of fire left in the in the Canterbury side let so St George take the penalty Tap will be taken 30 metres away from the, the Bulldogs line. And they don't go through the conventional tap free. They work down the blind, as St George loves to do. And this is Goldthorpe. They've got the entire ground to operate to on the right. Donnelly takes one in field. Now from Brown. Cross for Stevens. Goulet was looking for it. He's lost it, and it's a penalty. This time he's pinched the Bulldogs for dispossessing St George of that football. He missed one earlier, Eddie, but he didn't miss this one. And this will be the equaliser. Yeah, Mitch Newton, the man deemed to be guilty as Stevens goes to ground. And Newton going right on with the tackle there. Nice little pattern run there by St George. They crammed a couple of little plays down the near sideline here, condensing the Canterbury defence. Stevens was just working one for position there. They did have a, a good deal of numbers over on the right-hand side. Probably a pattern we'll see later in the game. They're condensing them up in one side of the field, looking to hit to the far side on about tackle three or four. Then Hughes gone off for some attention Wayne Bartram an easy kick for him similar to Halligan's and there's the equaliser it's two points all after 15 gone two points all the dogs of the dragons one of them will drop out today 30 meters out from their line and Stevens passes and they might pay a very expensive penalty. Well, he's a fine player, Jason Stevens, but these sort of pressure passes aren't needed. In your own 20 metre zone, didn't have to be thrown. Mark Coyne just standing out there. Had the arms ready for it, but a very poor pass. Mark Coyne with a very heavily strapped right hand there with his, uh, his broken wrist in recent weeks. That ball went directly to his bad hand and just couldn't get a grip on it. Terry Lamb working this scrum. Can they convert the St. George mistake into points? This is Matthew Ryan. 
handy player to have on your bench come to the right for one more with Dimmick an exhibition of his strength he reaches the 20 meter line they go to the right again Dean Fay 15 out a quick play the ball that might help Britt goes charging at the line Barnhill goes up the top Goulet underneath Hetherington dummy half Lamb is with it now he pushes it on then they turn it in Gillies is with it and the dogs are nine meters out on five Lamb comes to the right it's with Dimmick he throws the dummy on the bounce for Timu danger for St George has been snuffed out momentarily and now a knock on by Barnhill more pressure for St George a smile on the face of McCracken oh, some scrappy play there from the Sydney Bulldogs in the end it's turned out a tragedy for the mighty Saints the ball goes loose here through Timu and Dallas simply toes it through Barnhill couldn't pick it up well, they work on the blind side after winning the scrum and this is Dallas wondering with the referee obstructed Barnhill's vision of that kick Hetherington two meters out from the line will Canterbury be the first to score Timo away from Ryan for Halligan infield pass knocked down by the blue and white oh, some great defensive work here by Mark Coyne they just held off and held off Coyne and Zisti just look at them, they've read it so well and forced the mistake from the Bulldogs. It's probably the one problem with Canterbury's play and the reason why they're well down the try scoring list in comparison with the other seven top eight sides is that they can't get the ball to the edges of the field as quickly as the other good sides. The Ricky Stewart long pass, Terry Lamb and Craig Collar Mount are very good players, but they don't have that quick long passing game the other sides enjoy. Uh, as a result, they find it very hard to get the ball to the wings quickly enough to give them time. And uh, a testimony to that comment is 468 points for the Dogs as against 583 for St George. They scored 66 in the last game. Well, that's exactly right. I was going to make that point. The Cowboys actually did the Bulldogs points for a very big favour. This is Donnelly. And they're just beyond their own 20 metre line. Interesting to note that St George haven't played a top eight side in their last nine games so i don't know whether that's the right preparation coming into a quarter final good quick passing and then an infield kick by Sisti, and it has turned silver around and back to his own line silver tackle eventually made by mundane you could have just left him live there and picked up a penalty. Very good kick by Nick Zisti there. It's not easy under the best of conditions to control a ball while you're on the run there down a tight sideline, let alone in these greasy conditions, and it certainly puts St George on the ascendancy here now. Sideline Steve Rowe to report on Glenn Hughes. Yeah, Glenn Hughes has a cork, cork tip. I was surprised that they used Matthew Ryan. I think, I think the Bulldogs need a straight runner out there off Terry Lamb. If they're sliding like that in the defence of St George's side, I think they should use Jared McCracken. Here's another penalty going to the Dragons. Against the marker. The not releasing the man trying to play the ball, Jason Stevens. Two points all, 21 minutes almost gone. Weekend one of the 1995 Winfield Cup Finals. You're watching it on nine across Australia and across the Tasman. Bradley, who captained so well in the absence of coin. Now, Brown. And away for Mundine and on for Stevens. Stevens has been involved in every set of six. He might have made a couple of mistakes, but I'll tell you what, he's working hard. Now they're 12 metres out from the line. A bit of a scuffle up in back play between Stevens and Lamb. Brown plays football. Goldthorpe likewise holds it back, and Maybon came off his right hip. And there they are, 10 metres out from the line. As they come left from bathroom for Bradley, he's big and strong. Got a pass down, dived on by Mundine. Cleaned up by Mitch Newton. It was bathroom in fact. Brown took a look, gave it for Goldthorpe, rolls it in. Silver was there. Well read by the number one from Canterbury. Yeah, beautiful positioning there by Rod Silver. Very experienced fullback. 
who played most of his senior football at the East Club. Just looking at him drift behind the line there. That's great stuff. Matthew Ryan playing it now. A sloppy play the ball, and he's ruled that he lost it. So it's going to be a scrum feed and loose head for St George on the Bulldogs' 20-metre line. They'll be waiting for Gordon Tallis here, probably tackle two or three, maybe deck down this left-hand side. St George, very good at set plays out of scrums. They've got a few options, but I think Gordon Tallis around tackle three could be the man to watch. Indeed. The end of a long pass, and Tallis just inside the 20-metre line. He's come up without the ball, and referee Eddie Ward will put another scrum down. This time, the Dogs will have the feed. Yeah, they're bad mistakes to make on the first tackle. Tallis claiming it was reefed out, but uh, it didn't look, look like that on that occasion. And now a penalty, so the error compounded. Well, that's the second time St George have infringed the five metres behind the last line of forwards in the scrum. And uh, remember that they are differential penalties. Halligan finds the line 40 metres out. 3-2 penalty, St George, 2-2, the scoreboard. And very, very tight. i tell you what, if you think about it, matches between these two clubs in recent times, the number of them that have been very, very close on the scoreboard is quite incredible. Ryan pushed the pass. Touch judge call, penalty given to St George once again it's great defence by Mark Coyne he is in the top three defensive centres in the game today he sizes up every situation then drives look at him drive there and the ball going forward onto Halligan so a penalty to Saints just on Mark Coyne Fatty I mean a lot of people wondering whether or not he'd be fitting well today professional player with his much experience the last thing on his mind will be that that hand or the wrist has been broken in the last few weeks he'll have that right out of his mind and just concentrating on his job as you see there no fear in going in and a great tackle on his opposite number Barnhill now Brown on for Goldthorpe cross for Mundine Mundine we saw a little gap there and tried to scoop through it Timu closes it with Gillies and Coyne a dummy half has to make ground on the blind side. He picks up about seven metres. Gillies is there to make the tackle. Robert Relf is back from the blood bin. He's on the sideline waiting to come back in. Mitch Newton will come off as Bartram is tackled by Hetherington and Lamb. And Barnhill passes to the right for Goldthorpe to keep it on the ground. The weight on the kick is good, but now it finds the in-touch in goal. So 20-metre tap to restart for the Blue and Whites. Very intelligent side, St George. Canterbury run a defensive fat with Craig Polamanta protecting one of his centres almost all the time. In that set, they realised Polamanta was defending on the right. Three times they came back to the Canterbury left-hand side defence. So they're not only a very good side, they're a very intelligent side as well. Made it outside the 40-metre line. They've only used a couple of tackles. This is the start of a good set of six. As Dimmick plays it now from Lamb, it's out for Polo Mounter. puts the kick in on the early tackle, that's better tactics Maybon is back on his own line, he's got to come out from the corner that's great tactics this is his footing and Eddie Ward is now listening to a report from Martin Weeks, the touch judge I notice in back play, Graham Bradley has some sort of a problem and the player being called out is Matthew Ryan Steve Roach, you're sitting almost on top of it. What do you think it is? Yeah, well, Graham Bradley uh, feigned that one. He took Matthew Ryan out first, and then Ryan ran past him and pulled him back. It's amazing the penalty has gone to uh, St George. All right, Steve. And the penalty to the Dragons, 30 metres out from their own line. The incident involving Matthew Ryan and Graham Bradley. While well, you're there, Steve, did he get it right? No, he didn't. Thank you. <laughs> He wouldn't like to embellish on that. Stevens now. 
And this will be a penalty. Yeah, he's got to penalise the player lying in the ruck. Even if you're a big man like Darren Britton, you find it impossible to get out of there. And here's Darren. Caught up on the play, the ball, the Dragons with Jason Stevens trying to embarrass Darren Britt if they can, and they did that. Now the tap. Holler Mount are defending on the Canterbury right-hand side again. It'll be interesting to see St. George. They'll probably close a couple down here and then work a long one to the right-hand side, about tackle three or four. First thing they've got to do, Phil, is hold on to the ball. Barnhill is down, 20 metres out, 18 metres out, in fact. As Nathan Brown sweeps it, Goldthorpe with it, holds it back. And Mundine is held by Timu and Britt. So here they come back to the left. Brown. Cut out Stevens and Bartram puts it down. Bulldogs come up with it. Pull him out as ball. Bradley making sure that the man with the ball is the last to his feet. Dallas. Well, we said it in the preview. Steve Roach and Paul Vorton talked about it. Ball control, very important. The lower grades today. It was uh, evident there. Here's Britt to the halfway. 32-10 reserve grade to St. George. South got off to a good start in that. He couldn't carry it on. Five tackles gone. And uh, Baba, was he taken out late? Andy Ward said no. Play on. Saints are with it. 25 off their own line. Maybon for Brown. Brown, his first little run out of dummy half. That is Donnelly on the left wing today. Brown, big Goulet. Funny player in many ways, Scott Goulet. You might think he's having a quiet one, and he hasn't taken the ball up very much. But then you quickly look at the tackle count, and he's, he's the quiet achiever. With 11 tackles, he's one off the pace for the top tackle. That finds the line, 25 out. Far side of the Sydney Football Stadium, off the boot of Noel Goldthorpe. Coin, of course, pleasing the St George fans with his announcement of a continued stay with the club. Work this scrum. Halligan comes out to the 30 meter line. Interesting to look at his statistics as a goal kicker, Halligan. Down, very much so. A race between Dallas and Donnelly. And Donnelly is with it for Saints. Bartram. Bartram's away from Gillies. That is great skill from Jason Donnelly. That is not an easy task going down on a rolling ball in these conditions, particularly with a defender all over the top of you. Stevens got a pass off for Brown. Now, St. George. Zisti it was who came up with the loose ball. Maybon is under that strong tackle. Brown. Goldthorpe. On and away for Mundine. Tallis. Driven into the ground by Polamalva. 30 metre line. Mundine on. Donnelly with it now. He started it. And that's five. Stevens. Brown on the blind side. Through the hands. Off a bulldog. It came off the dogs. I know he didn't play at it, but if it was he that was last off, it'll be a St George feed. Another grubber put in here by Talis. I am surprised, Phil, that in these greasy conditions we haven't seen more bombs. I don't think we've seen one yet. No, well, I thought it'd be a hard day for the fullbacks. They haven't seen much of the much of the ball from kicks at all. A great tactic in this type of weather. Good little short kick from Terry Lamb over on this other side. I go back to Jason Donnelly's great uh, great field, but Brett Dallas was right over the top of him. I think if they persevere with that sort of tactic early in the tackle count. It'll be rewarded as well before this game's out. Now there's a brawl erupted at the scrum. Eddie Ward's gone with the football. He's, he's let them play on. Ten metres out from the Bulldogs line. They're still fighting in the back play. Tell 
Newcastle's letting them go. St. George go to the right. They try to keep it alive. Elegance come up with it. Bulldogs off their own line through Demick. The fight still goes on. Oh, it's out over the touchline now. Talos has just thrown 49,000 right crosses. This has gone done. longer than the heavyweight title already. They've been blowing for how long now? Oh, minute 20. Well, it, it, all, it was from the scrum, it had all died down, and then Ralph and Tower stood up and went toe to toe. They went whisker for whisker, and Talos got right on top. The original scrum, the play goes wide. Oh, hey, yeah, there it is, Robert Ralph through the first thing, and then he got Brown as well. So he's the instigator, no doubt about it. I think, it'd be, I think it'd be long odds that they'll be able to identify Robert Ralph, though. Well, he's got the nose band on. So it went on and on and on. Well, we're going to be short in numbers after this one. A couple of incidents involving these players. The referee will take action, no doubt. Robert Ralph, he's been called over for the first time. There's no doubt that the number 11 owned the swinging fist. It was aimed at Nathan Brown's nose. Now, he's put him in the sin bin. Gordon Tallis to the sin bin and, and Dean Pay. And he's given St George the penalty. Yeah, I think he's got Dean Pay for running in uh, a bit later. When the brawl re-erupted, Dean Pay sprinted about 40 metres to run in to have a lash. And uh, that's why he's gone to the bin. Which one of you said there's no love lost here? That was the understatement of the, of the decade. I think they're just trying to sort out who is on top. Well, there's what we believe to be the start of it with Robert Ralph. Well, that's out of the old days, isn't it? One from the second row, Fatty. Yeah. Different tactics there from uh, the Bulldogs. It's hard to understand why 35 minutes into the match. Ironic that one of the Bulldogs helpers made the comment on radio. I think it was last night that he expected there might be a little bit of fisty cuffs in this match today. The kick from Bartram is... Oh, it's landed on the bar and got over. Boarding out scrape of butter, but it's got over. He's a Queenslander. <laughs> Must be a Queenslander. Oh, he's a genius. 4-2 St George. Haven't seen that for a long time. Only Bartram could do it, Fatty. You taught him that one. But the mistake of Robert Ralph throwing punches in the scrum has cost them two points. So we have an undisputed leader. St. George by two. You'd be enjoying this one, Blocker, down there. A little bit of the old fisty cuffs. Oh, sensational, wasn't it? Well, I really did enjoy that one. You uh, started to salivate. I couldn't believe uh, Dean Pay ran in from 50 metres to get involved in it. Uh, him and Talis have been each at each other's throat all game. Did you throw a couple block? Oh, no, I, I dodged a couple, actually. <laughs> 30 metres off their own line. They lead by two. Bradley! Bradley's away! Won't have the pace! Kicks into the centre! Mundine! Mundine! He gets it! But he doesn't right now. And He's to the Dragons. And Craig Colomounder, as Phil Gould said, maybe St. C was a weak spot as Graham Bradley went through him. And away he went. This is good stuff by Bradley. He knew he couldn't get the ball to Mundine. 
but the next best tactic was the kick, a genius kick by Bradley. Look at the bump, use the, the hip and the elbow, and away he went. He hasn't got express pace, but he had enough to get through Polamounter, sizing up the situation, Donnelly in support. The great pictures, the mind's ticking over. Look at the timing of the kick, beautiful. And Brett Dallas couldn't foot it with Anthony Mundine, who had the full head of steam. That's a skill in itself, a right foot kicker kicking the ball back in field from that side. Well picked up by Mundine. That's a play we highlighted in the paper this morning. Bradley on the short line side. Nathan Brown and Bradley have a great combination, even though they haven't got much room in which to work. Bradley that time being able to stand over the top of Polamounter. Mundine was on the inside. Rod Silver did a very good job of shielding the inside pass, forcing Bradley wide, but such are the skills of the modern day player now the ball's never dead tremendous kick inside Anthony Mundy I didn't realize he had that much pace but he certainly put a gap in the in the race of the line great play by Graham Bradley he loves that short side the man they call the penguin conditions made to order Bartram Levin in 18 out and that's wide very much so. St. George in the shadows of half time, leading by eight points to two. Bradley ran straight over the top of the Bulldogs and then watched that kick. Undine showed blistering acceleration. He's had a fine game too, Mundine. 11 tackles, heavily involved. Nearly scored the first uh, try of the game in the opening minutes. Maybon. Not a minute and a quarter on the clock. Stevens. And Smith to the park club. The end of the season. He's had a very good run with St George, Brian Smith. And from what I can gather, a very popular coach with players. He'll be replaced by one of the great St George players of years gone by. That man, Rod Reddy. The Rockhampton Rocket. Mistake by Goldthorpe. Penalty. He's penalised for throwing the ball away. 30... 30 seconds left on the clock. Daryl Halligan, one of the great sharpshooters in the game. We'll get a shot at goal here. I'm not sure if it was uh, thrown away. Hetherington seemed to come in and knock Goldthorpe, which knocked the ball loose. Goldthorpe looked bemused when the penalty was given, but Halligan is 39 metres out. Conditions are a bit tricky, though. The wet ball had everything this semi-final or quarter final hasn't it been a great game raps i don't know whether great's the word but it's had enough to keep us entertained i hope it's entertaining you people at home nine cameras taking you right through the quarters and the finals of the last winfield cup one of the game's great goal kickers he went past a thousand only about 19 or 20 have done that here he comes didn't quite get it but it's enough it's enough for the flags to go up and two points half time is with us st george eight the sydney bulldogs four here's a break coming back with paul vorton in just a moment there's the the work rate of the Canterbury forwards. Oh, it's been fairly well shared. Uh, Dean Payne down there in five tackles mainly because he was in the sin bin. But uh, Darren Britt, the 11 hit ups, he's their best hit up merchant. He hasn't offloaded too many times today, but the, he may be about to if Craig Polamount can start backing him up. And for the Saints, David Barnhill and Scott Gula leading the tackle counts, and Jason Stevens, their best hit up merchant, with 11 as well. Stage set the start of the second half and uh, Daryl Halligan it is he starts and Wayne Bartram replies for St George and a driving tackle 
by Jason Hetherington. Strong little rooster. And here's that tackle again. Takes him on the shoulder, drives with his thighs, piles him into the ground. Saints. Some players taking advantage of uh, a dry jumper. Now Barnhill it is that comes out to the 40 metre line. Able to unload. Mundine, Mundine, uh, he's lost it. And the Bulldogs a chance to spread it quickly. Timu. The times they've been able to offload in traffic, Saints have been very, very dangerous. Unfortunately then, Mundine trying to do something special. Dropped it. That's an ordinary play the ball there by Dimmick. Darren Britt then flung into the ground by Stevens from Hetherington. They, they come across Gillies. He's just outside the 20 metre line. As the Bulldogs come to the left. This is Matthew Ryan who was put into the game very early through the misfortune of young Glenn Hughes. Now Dimmick. Came off St George, and again Dimmick kicks for Stevens to dive on it for the Dragons. Now the Dragons, with their captain Mark Coyne, making ground towards the 20 metre line. A sloppy play, the ball. Goldthorpe scurries away, and Steve Roach with his half-time report. Are you there, Steve? Yes, uh, Brian. Brian Smith pretty happy with St George's first half performance. He said they've made a number of breaks that they've got to learn to finish off. You don't get that many chances in the semi-final. He said try a few high balls for Silva. It's all been along the ground so far. The big news to come out of the, the half-time thing is Talis is on report for biting. So we'll see what happens about that for the Bulldogs. Uh, their coach Chris Anderson, he was he was all right. He said they've got to get more alert when they've got the football. He said reckons there's a bit of value on the inside ball, but you've got to be there to support that play he said silly penalties holding down and laying in the ruck across him they've got to cut that out all right steve thank you for that and i would take it that uh, glenn hughes is out of this game as it goes across now for lamb he comes back and they go down a wide blind side with dimmick 40 meters out for the st george lion and here they come from the sin bin lamb over Polamata across. And now Matthew Ryan got through one, but not through Mundine. The last floating pass out to Lamb. It took an age. They keep it in the hands and Timu off the boot of Dallas. Half a chance for the Bulldogs. Maybon, well, he grasped the ball in the field of play. And then the impact of the tackle has taken him in, in goal. And that's better play from the Bulldogs. Some good sustained attack. The inside balls are coming, and they're making some good ground with them. Dallas, nice kick on the end of that attacking raid. And Mabon did well to cover this up, let me tell you. Line drop out. Take it on the feet, firstly, by Brett Dallas. Season of mixed fortunes for him. Representative honours and then a test jersey. And then, of course, that uh, terrible knee injury. It was Dean Pay. Pay is able more often than not to give you a quick play of the ball. Darren Britt, nine metres out from the line. Hetherington. And uh, plenty of players in motion. Dimmick, Dimmick pulled down by Stevens. The last. Terry's with it. It goes high. The uprights might become important in this play, but they don't. Marked and brought back to the 20 for the restart. Chase is a little bit slow there from the Sydney Bulldogs team as Donnelly makes nine metres through the tap. Crowd groaning, calling to the referee for the Bulldogs being inside the 10. Goldthorpe, another exhibition of the slipperiness of uh, the SFS. 
Tallis. Been involved in this game in many dimensions. Dean slipping an inside ball for Barnhill and then Brown and then Tallis and Tallis. He's away from Hedrington. Turns it in for Mundane. He puts on a step. Here's a chance off the boot. Goulet and taken by Halligan. Oh, that was nearly the work of a messiah by Halligan. Ooh, how close was that, Gus? It was close, closer than you'd like it. Great work there from Gordon Tallis on the edge of the ruck. Wet weather football, keeping the ball alive. Tony Mundine, he did, you know, beats Rod Silver easily. Gets the one over the top, just couldn't get a hand on it. Maybody had no alternative but to kick the ball. And Halligan's done a, a genius job to get that. Well, he did because he'd gone in to cut off the play and then had a turn and chase out. He saved them a, a certain try there. And little Rod Maybon. 30 metres away from the Bulldogs line. They go down the blind. Barnhill held on the 20. And George, supporters, sensing that the, the break might be coming. Bartram, 12 out. Brown, Goldthorpe, Stevens, slammed down on the 10. Ball comes free. Ward is standing on top of it. He has no hesitation in putting a scrum down. Stephen saying to Eddie Ward, look at the replay on the big screen at the SFS. Lamb a ball, a little tackle, and there's Lamb's hand in there. He well, don't play for 15 years and learn nothing. Terry Lamb realised they had to come up with something. He also realised that the try to St George now puts them beyond reach. He was probably even prepared to sacrifice the two points. If in fact he was caught, he took the challenge there. He didn't want the try scored to put him in more than six points in front. It's Robert Ralph now. He spent a short period in the blood bin after he was taken out, not in possession, again by Gordon Tallis. This is an interesting question. What if he had have been taken out of the game entirely by the Tallis hit? Personally, thought Tallis got off a bit light with just a penalty. Lamb, I saw a trainer talking to Terry just a couple of seconds back. A long, hard discussion with the Bulldogs captain. I wouldn't be surprised, Ray, if they move him one wider from the ruck. He and Polamount have swapped from the side in the program. Lamb's been playing half Polamount of 5'8. I wouldn't mind thinking next time Canterbury go on the attack. You'll find Terry Lamb back in a more customary role of 5'8". We're on the St George 40 metre line. And we're in the second half. The second of the elimination quarters. Goulet. No gain in ground for St George. Now. This man that has offered them so much quality. Mundine. Halligan. Halligan was riding shotgun for Silver. Finished up with the push in the back. Now rounded up by Zisti. 8-4 the Dragons coming up to 49 minutes. Lamb at 5-8. Matthew Ryan in the centres. Now Lamb a dummy half. Back for Gilly. That's the Darren Britt, I should say. 35 off their own line. Colomata turning it in. Now we've got Gillies. Last tackle for the lamb kick. Decides to keep it on the ground. Was he taken out late? He's called for a penalty and got it. He's penalised Jason Stevens for tripping. He's an absolute genius, Terry Lamb. If you don't think he played for this, he had the opportunity to kick long. As soon as he knew he got near the defence, he puts a little one in, hoping for the body contact, and then plays it for all it's worth. Very intelligent play by Terry Lamb. He knew what his side needed at that stage. Very strange decision to kick a goal from 40 metres out in these conditions. I suppose we're talking about one of the best in the game. Four points behind on the scoreboard. Jason Stevens. A rest for him and uh, Troy Stone in 28 goes on. A good with young St George players. Goulet has come off as well. 
and uh, Jeff Hardy has gone on. Well, Daryl Halligan, I mentioned earlier, went past a thousand career points last week. Only the 19th player to do that, and the first since Greg Alexander last year. From 39 out, it's got plenty of length, it's got direction and two points. They edge a fraction closer. That's much better stuff from Canterbury. Even though you're behind on the scoreboard under these conditions, you've got to be very, very patient. The tendency is to try and push the pass because you are behind, but in these conditions, you've just got to wait and wait. Tuck the ball under your arm, take it forward, kick long, and just hope to come up with a, a drop ball down here at the right end of the field. This is Hardy now. 28 out from his own line. Dragons by two. Talis takes two defencemen and still unloads and Maybon is wrapped up by John Timu the last tackle now Goldthorpe on the blind side a rebound and six more tackles says Eddie Ward he's decided the ball was played at David Barnhill held by Britt and Lamb Brown directs play to the left Bradley. That's the 40 metre line just behind them. Jason Donnelly. 8 6. Saints. Saints by two. 53 minutes gone. The Goldthorpe to keep it low not going to find touch the wingers coming down the ground fast zisty but silver is out to his own 10 meter line great chase by st george as dallas slips over Ooh, gets hammered by barnhill front rowers love those little wingers that come in to hit the ball up don't they dimmick david, david barnhill I reckon his eyes lit up when he saw that coming. Brit. Now Dean Pay, where's Gordon Tallis? Almost sense that when Dean has got the ball, Tallis is looking for him. Polamata's kick turns Maybon around. Back in the scoreboard corner. Yeah, it's kick and chase for kick and chase now. Both these sides have settled in where the ball's got to be played. I think we think we'll see too many risks taken for the next 10 or 15 minutes. Hardy. Down the right of the ground. And now Stone. Two more tackles left on this set. Barnhill. What a confidence shown by Brian Smith in Young Stone. I mean, it's a vital knockout semi final here. He's taken off Goulet and Jason Stevens and brought on a young fellow. Great confidence shown by the coach in, in this, man's young, this young man's ability. Just looking at these both sets of forwards as this arm wrestle continues. Five tackles kick, five tackles kick forwards are slowly but surely taking longer to get back in the in the attack line yeah, they have to be getting tied the bulldogs only just got back on side through the forwards and the saints are going much better both teams of course preying on a mistake down in their uh, opposition's danger zone this is where the talk's important perhaps steve roach can, can let us know who's talking the loudest at the moment when you get tired one side will stop talking the other side will sense that and just come on a little stronger especially the Saints at the moment Gus are really talking it up Noel Goldthorpe as you know organizes everything that his players do and he's right into Gordon Tallis at the moment so this uh, Bulldog Simon Gillies unable to play the ball so he's moved to play the ball it's a cross now for Terry Lamb and, uh, the kick Bouncing 35 away from St George's line and Maybon 
comes back to be tackled by Jason Hetherington. Darren Britt, one of the hard-working Bulldog forwards, has been replaced by Mitch Newton, jumping number 28, the fresh man on. Coyne goes away from Dummy Half. Brown links in. Oh, what a good tackle! Terry Lamb. That was a beauty. Now Hardy. Two six and a half gone. Eight six. Dragons. Those just in front. They've got the only try on the board. Goldthorpe goes to the air. And taken nicely by Silver. Two big plays there in the space of 30 seconds. Terry Lamb, he'll get you a penalty when you want one. He'll strip the ball when he thinks it's necessary. And there he's, as Steve Rad said, Selby's side was a little quiet, came up with a tremendous hit. Now Rod Silver's backed up. He's captain with a great take to give him a restart from the 20 metre zone. Two big plays there in the last 30 seconds. The Bulldogs have made couple of changes Newton is on Britt is off Price is on Ralph is off find Stephen Price in the headgear in 27 Lamb pushes on Palamada drives Timu in Silver links up support from Price Lamb is with him 28 out the dogs Lamb long pass for Halligan From one end to the other, first one, then the other. Demick's kick, Donnelly goes back and forces the 20 metre tap. Well, we haven't seen a decent high kick all day, you know. These wingers have been standing out there and they've just taken them easily because there's been no pressure. The kicks haven't been high enough. Gee, I thought that pass from Donnelly to Maybon was forward. Would have been a big call. I do fancy it was forward. Brought a big roar from the, from the Canterbury supporters. This is Stone. Price lines him up. They're near the halfway. Goldthorpe looks to be cool. Of course. Here's a chase down the ground by the captain. Silver's away from him. And then he's been rounded up by Mundine. Dallas. Well, the fullbacks and wingers have just got to keep their cool, haven't they? It's a game of patience. There's nothing in the scoreline. Both sides have settled into a kick and chase game. You can hear Terry Lamb screaming out on the field, just be patient, be patient. It'll come. Don't try and force it. Pay. On the 30 metre line. And he's lost it. He's putting a scrum down and giving St George the feed. So is this the mistake St George have been waiting for? Is Dean Pay going to ground in possession? And that is a cold loss, that one. So you can't blame anyone. So this is what it's all about the arm wrestle. Work for them to make a mistake. They used to call him the super sub. No longer. Talos puts a dent in them. Now Bartram. And that's the 10 metre line in front of him. Wide to the right. Brown. 12 metres from the line. Now Goldthorpe. Back in for Mundine. Back for Barnhill. Shovel down and Maybon. Oh, Dimmick rattled him up. Now Brown. Maybon. Bradley. Well, St. George. Great defence. That was sloppy by them by the same token. Matthew Ryan goes for the pedal. Saints have come up with it. Brown to play it. An hour of the game has gone. Coin. Brown. 30 out. This is sudden death football at its best. Stone. Goldthorpe. Maybon. 
a little fullback living up in the back line. That's where they're at. Barnhill. There's not a lot of petrol in the tank of some of these forwards. The dogs now. They keep thinking that it'll be one of the fast men that could run the length of the field and win this game. It's so hard to score tries by squeezing balls out in this type of weather. I know we saw a try last night from Newcastle on tackle two or three with a chip over the top. We saw one try today, Graham Bradley putting the ball on the toe for Mundine to score. I've got no doubt that the tries are going to come from kicks, and you may as well do it early in the tackle count when wingers and fullbacks are up and aren't ready for it. This type of play like Dimmick just displayed, trying to squeeze balls out, is not on in this type of weather. You've got to be really steel-minded. You've got to be patient. Kick early, no matter where you are on the field, because that is the element of surprise. Well, I think St George's problem has been, look, they've been uh, throwing a lot of passes, but never to men in better position than themselves. You know, they're all flat-footed, throwing the balls back to a man who's standing there under all sorts of pressure from the defence. I think it's only going to take someone like a Rod Mabon or an old Goldthorpe to take three or four steps backwards and say, you know, look, there's going to be a chance here. I've got to hit the ball at some pace and he'll get through the gaps. They've got terrific runners. I mean, Gordon Tallis and these people love to hit the ball at pace. They've just got to set up, charge into the line, hope to drag a few in, little chip and chase, little grubber kick behind the line. This is mistake-type football. Big Bradley is inside the 30, but he's outside the touch. As soon as you push the ball to the edges, it is very, very hard. I think St George are playing a little silly at this stage. They're in front on the scoreboard. They just need to keep putting the ball down towards the end goal and keep Canterbury embedded there. It's Canterbury that they should be coming up with these mistakes. Well, Bradley got rid of Polamander again, but Gillies was the man. The big tough second rower coming over the top, which forced Bradley out. 17 minutes on the clock. And in the commentary box, the state coaches with us today. The big fella on the sideline, Stephen. Saints by two. Good one, this one. Oh, outstanding game of football. There's been some great performances. Uh, we haven't mentioned him that much, but Simon Gillies' defensive effort has been outstanding. And also for St George, another player we haven't mentioned that much, David Barnhill has made tremendous yardage for the Dragons. Gillies is in front by a country mile on the other forward, Steve. Believe it or not, John Timu is second top tackler, 21 behind Gillies, 24. Newton, a one-hander for Timu. Halfway line in front of them. Right for Lamb. Long ball, Ryan. They've got numbers on the right. They need it quick hands. Pull them out of. Lamb keeps it going to the right. Gillies puts a kick in. Maybon. And in back play, Gordon Tallis and Terry Lamb having a tater tate. Terry Lamb searching for another penalty. He's trying absolutely everything. Oh, look, Captain. Jolting tackle there by Gillies. Etherington gives him a pat. Hardy. Comes Lamb. Look at that. Bulldogs are lifting. Lamb again, right in the mood of that. He's trying absolutely everything. He tried to bait Gordon Tallis there to bring the linesman in so they could get the ball back. Now he's in there with the heavy defence trying to lift his charges. I get the feeling here St George might be next to come up with a mistake. They're not going anywhere with the ball, as Paul Wharton said. Brown puts over a delicate kick. Silver, read it well. Carries it back, 45 out from the Dragons line. Bloodbend coming up. Yeah, that's the kick that Phil's uh, been talking about, but unfortunately for Saints, it was David Barnhill chasing it instead of a, a speedy back as Troy Stone looks like heading to the blood bin. Jason Stevens back onto the padding. Chip by Brown. Rod Silver, all day long, he's been precisely where he was required. I guess that's his job. They've got to make one mistake in this type of football, though, and it's good night, Irene. St George's only appearance at the stadium this year, Ray. They'll beat in the last 30 seconds by the Roosters on a weak and bleak day, so... Glad to you remembering that. I just thought I'd bring that up for all the St George supporters. Lamb turning it in. Dimmick slammed down by Stevens over the top of Mundine. Now Hetherington away on the right. Referee saw the tackle, said it wasn't late. Maybon. Still a better tactic though, isn't it? They've just got to be patient and wait for the mistake. 
Donnelly. The Bulldogs, I said it earlier, I think they've lifted, if anything, in defence. Tired maybe, but some of these tackles are driving St George back. Ten metres out from their own line. And... He's called the forward or the knock-on. That's what they were looking for. Is this the chance for the Bulldogs? The Saints have been leading all game. This is desperation stuff by them when they don't need it. They're not behind on the scoreboard, trying to force the ball eight metres out from their own line. E. Ward calling out a few people now, courtesy of the touch judge there, Martin Weeks, has come in. Well, it's Talis and Lamb. It goes way back. It's almost in another chapter. Good. Standing there looking down at Terry with the, the Steve Roach eyes. You just said you weren't serious, Terry, were you? Gordon stood on Craig Polamana's hand and he objected and then <laughs> Gordon stood there wanting to throw a couple and then went and baited him. Polamana might have got one on his whiskers. Now, the Bulldogs. Can they snatch it? Silver into the back line. 18 metres out. Matthew Ryan. Mundine, Barnhill. They make the tackle. Working it to the centre. They go back to the blind side. Pull them out, a pull down by Bradley. Centre left defence for Bradley. Hetherington. Little misunderstanding with Mitch Newton. The big number 28. Couple of tackles left. Hetherington along the line for Lamb. He's on a run-around mission, pay, pay, Dean pay, Dean pay, he's over, he's over, Dean pay scores, the dogs are in front. Looking for one defensive lap, one missed tackle, the Sydney Bulldogs, and they found it out wide, Saints didn't have the numbers, lovely ball by Terry Lamb. Look at Pay, he's got 22 metres to go. They hung off, they hung off, they went for Timu. Man with the ball, and there's the missed tackle from Goldthorpe. Dean Pay's had a great game. Just as we predicted earlier, as soon as they got in good attacking position, Terry Lamb parked himself too wide out on the edge of the ruck in his normal 5'8", ran the ball across field. Great cutout pass, had Mark Coyne going infield. And Dean Pay playing a little wide, but still with great ball playing ability. Stood the defence up, got one on one with his man. Hint of a shepherd there on Mark Point, didn't allow him to come back to Dean Pay, but I think it's all right. Given great that, strength. That, that camera is shooting out of the corner. A dead, a dead front on shot might have shown you a different picture. It looks on that corner camera as though there's an obstruction. Was a picture taken by the camera right on the corner I just suggest to you that the angle might have been misleading oh look at Halligan Halligan gets another two the blue and whites are rejoicing 12-8 now back at the football stadium same same ball game just a different leader the dogs they led 2-0, then they squared at St George, then St George, they dictated, they led. But now, late in the game, under 10 to go, the dogs are back in front. The veteran captain, he'll keep doing that now. He'll be soaking up time, forcing scrums, soaking up the minutes. I don't know if I've had a better player today than that man there, Terry Lamb. He's been in everything. He's come up with the big plays when they've been needed. Driving his team. His last dream in rugby league is to win a premiership as a captain. Over the years, Fatty, the best wet weather footballer in the game, Terry Lamb. He squeezed that, that try out of St George. He just kept his side going forward. Be patient, be patient, be patient. It will come. 
They finally got the mistake and the scrum win in deep into St George territory. Three tackles later, he's put Dean Pay over for the try. Not only, not only that, Phil, I put it to you that the mere fact that he kept supporting Dean Pay, defenders hung off Dean Pay because of the presence of Terry Lamb. He didn't score the try, but he might as well have. This is Stevens. 40 out from his own line. There's eight and a half on the clock. And Tallis is ready to run through a brick wall. Brown kicks ahead. Zisti's after it. Silver again. Copped. He's copped a knee or a boot in the ribs. And he's had a great game. Both fullbacks have worked very hard today. And Rod Silver has been on the end of many dicey situations. None more so than this one. A good little chip. I still don't understand why both sides haven't bombed the wings and the fullbacks. 40 metres away from their own line, the Bulldogs. With a little comfort zone, 12-8 lead. Lamb again puts himself up the front of the stage. Maybon smashed into the ground by Gillies. 28th tackle for Simon Gillies. Goulet. Mark Bell, 29. Oh! Lamb has let one go after Bell. Let a little one go while lying on his back. And it still goes on, this dislike for one another. There'll be no time off here either. Which way will the penalty go? It's still working down the clock. Will Bell let one go? Well, in that case, the touches have seen it right. Well, Terry's got 10 in the bin. For retaliating. If the touchy has seen it right, then the Bulldogs should get a penalty, but no, it's gone to St George Way. Well, the penalty was awarded for the high tackle in the first instance. Right up. Terry's in the bin. That's it for the game for him. Down to 12 men, Saints. Will they come storming back into it? If I remember correctly, Ray didn't. Saints beat the Bulldogs early in the game in the last couple of minutes. That Cobra. Yeah, that's right. You're quite right. I made the comment earlier the closeness of the score line between these neighbouring clubs. It looks like it's on again. 7 6 it was the grand final in 85. 22 18 this year. 12-8 currently, the Dogs. Goulet, now Canterbury, with 12 men, their captain is gone. Brown, five and three quarters on the clock. Stevens, double pumps it. Van Hell, 22 out. High pass, Goldthorpe turns it in. Stevens and Van Hill. Van Hill, back into the traffic. And he's lost it, has he? Bulldogs ball. So once again, that's been their problem. They're passing, they're standing, but to men, you know, not in very good position to run with the football. As soon as they're getting it, all they can do is stand and look to pass again. Newton. Out to the 30-metre line. Event of a draw, 10 minutes each way. Extra time. experienced men like Dean Pay and Jim Dimming must assert their authority amongst the Bulldogs ranks now try and close it down I don't know about you blokes but this has got that grand final touch about it hasn't it? tension of sudden death football there's nothing like it Dimmick rolling it over the sideline he takes on extra responsibilities now. Ooh. Scrum on the St George 40 metre line. Ward checking the five on the Canterbury, the Canterbury back line. Mundine. He's 
Bartram. Now Zisti. Maybon. They're not going to do it from down here. They've got to get themselves in a foot race for some stage. Probably down Halligan's wing. Goldthorpe. Seven short of halfway. Tackle that by Stephen Price. They go wide. Coin. Now Goulet. Mark Bell. Oh, Coin Brown. And Bradley. But he's ruled a scrum, has he? He's going to knock on on the inside here, the ball drifting forward. From there, from Nathan Brown, although he's facing backwards, he's claiming the ball travelled forward off his hands. No doubt that he's right, my opinion. So, the Bulldogs, three minutes to go, in front by four. Hetherington works the blind side for Gillies. It's a matter of control the ball. Keep it under your wing. Don't give up anything dangerous. That's exactly what you don't want. There's no need for it. There is absolutely no need for it. There's two minutes to go on the clock. You're in possession of the ball and four points in front. You invite St George back into the game now for a last throw. Oh, how would you like to be one of the coaches, Phil? Well, it happens to us all. Happened yeah. to us all as players, Fatty, didn't it? Dimmick, Dimmick is blowing up and saying, how is that not forward? You've got to agree with the young man. Now St George have got to go wide. Goulet, just into Canterbury's territory. 12-8. Bulldogs in front. Goldthorpe swallowed by the, the Bulldogs defence of Mitch Newton. I think we'll get your bomb this time, Fatty. Stevens. One-handed pass to Goldthorpe. Rolls it in behind Halligan. Oh. oh, misunderstanding by the Bulldogs. One tackle to go. St. George on their last tackle. Mundine and Brown. Brown rolls it in. And Canterbury clean it up. They're going to get another shot here. Players lifting themselves off the grass. A mix-up here by Halligan. And Silva. Donnelly, all he could do is dive on it. There's one tackle left. I thought they might have run it. Safety first by them. And this is it. This wow. is it. That bounce has cost them valuable time. Maybon. One minute and ten seconds. Saints, it looks like they're gone. Bartram, Barnhill, 40 metre line. Ryan hangs on with Polamounda. The Dogs with 12. Brown, Goldthorpe, they cut out Goulet, they find Tallis. Tallis gets rid of Halligan. Timo makes the tackle with Demick. Great strength there, Gordon Tallis. He was in the grandstand for sure there, fought his way back in field. Goldthorpe for Brown, around the back for Bell, back for Barnhill, taken in the defence of Ryan, 30 seconds on the clock, Brown's pass for Goulet, inside the 20, who wants it? Tellers has got it, throws it infield, play on for Zisti, pull down 12 out. Here we go, Fatty. 18 seconds on the clock, the last, the bomb. That man's been waiting for it. There it is. Oh, Dallas has lost it and got it back. Scrum, it won't get packed. So the clock, the clock. We'll see there is no more. It's all over. St. George are out. The Bulldogs are in. Tremendous suspense. Great tension. Nothing like it. Sudden death football at its best. This was a grind. 12-8. One try each. Four goals to two, the difference. Pay got the try that won it. 
12 8. Hope you enjoyed it. Brilliant stuff. Gillies was Gillies was tremendous. That's him on camera. What did he do? 31 and 10. The forlorn look of Scott Gourlay. The one they had. The one that they let out. Be no joy for that young man, Jason Stevens, here at headquarters. The end of the season for him and St George and for Brian Smith. We wish him well as he journeys to England to continue his coaching. That takes us out uh, to a break now, and then we're back with Paul and the summation of a tremendous elimination quarterfinal. What? Sensational game here. That's what semi-final footy is all about. In the end, uh, Canterbury running out winners, 12 points to eight. The Sydney Bulldogs, it's one try apiece. Dean Pay getting the all-important match winner late in the second half. Halligan, four from four. Just goes to show what great goal kickers can do on their day. Mundine got the try for St George. And Wayne Bartram, two from three for them. A fantastic game of football. Uh, 12 points to eight. The Sydney Bulldogs winning. It had everything. It had fights. It had great defence. Some some uh, some good attack but in the end i think st george paid for the, the fact that they really didn't go forward with the football they seemed to be pedestrian at times and uh, the bulldogs made the most of when they had possession our man of the match today had a fantastic game was terry lamb and uh, he was in it, involved in everything he was uh, carting the ball up leading his team from the front urging them on from behind and ray he didn't have a great game tezza well that was his 323rd game today he has been uh around longer than any player in rugby league history. And you're quite right, today was a, a, an outstanding effort by Terry Lamb. I think we should pay special mention though uh, to people like Simon Gillies and Dean Pay. I personally enjoyed the confrontation between Dean Pay and Gordon Tallis. It went on, it raged on right through the match. And uh, they set to in their own private war. There were some uh, unbelievable moments, some controversies and some sensations. And now of course some heartache uh, for the Dragons. Mundine will think back to that try that, well, it should have been a try early in the game and probably the one that has cost them the right to go on and contest the last Winfield Cup. But it's it's the Bulldogs. They go on. Bulldogs, I thought they played a good all-round game, very physical game. Uh, Jim Dimmick, another one to shine today. Yeah, well, Dimmick is, of course, uh, he's the right-hand man for Terry Lamb and uh, he, he, he steps into the breach. He takes over when Terry's not there or on the other side of the ruck. Um, I thought at halftime St George they had it. I thought they were the better team by a fairly good space at halftime. But the second half I thought they lacked adventure. I thought they played some dumb football in the second half, the Dragons. Maybe brought on by, by the fact that they were very tired. It was one of those draining days, wasn't it? They did seem to concentrate on the blind side for mine far too much. But the match winning try came from Dean Pay yes. off a Terry Lamb pass. And it was beautiful to watch if you're a, a Bulldog supporter. The mere presence of uh, Terry Lamb in this try, I think, goes a long way to Dean Pay getting this ball over the line. Look at Lamb, he's hanging around like a drover's dog. He's still there, and a couple of those defencemen, they hung off Pay because they thought the best support player in the game might just come up with the football. Uh, he didn't. In the, talk in the commentary box, maybe a hint of a shepherd. Uh, I didn't think so. Well, I've got to say to you that um, one of the shots we took was mm. from a low-down corner camera I would love to have seen it dead set front on. I think you might have got a different yeah, picture. Sure. I'm not making excuses, don't get me wrong, no. for the referee, but I, I, I'd hate to think there was an obstruction I in thought it. he had a fine game to Eddie Wood. Well, after the match, we spoke to one of the, the Bulldog stalwarts, Simon Gillies. An outstanding performance by the, uh, by the doggies this afternoon. Inspirational stuff. A real sudden death semi-final. It had everything. Yeah, well, that's what, uh, that's what it's supposed to have, I suppose. It's supposed to be a game down to the wire and... There was no doubt today's was. You guys had the intent to go out and try and upset the Big St George forwards? Yeah, we watched, uh, we watched the video of their game last week and our coach, they played before us all year this year, so Chris has watched a lot of their games and they certainly dominate in the first 10, so we had to match them. I thought the turning point of the game was the last 15 minutes. Some inspirational stuff from Terry Lamb in defence, also yourself chasing for marker. That turned the game for mine. Well, I think, well, as I said to uh, Johnny P, Terry Lamb, I think he lifted... 15 minutes before the half time, you know. Terry's just amazing how he keeps going and 
He, he got in the bin. I don't think he was that disappointed to go in the bin. Actually, he was looking a bit weary. Well, one of the best things about the performance today from the doggies was your patience. You didn't get upset. You didn't try and offload the football too much. Just hung in there. You can put that down to Terry Lamb? Oh, I think it definitely comes down to the person uh, steering the ship around the field, and that's Terry for sure. Uh, Chris said at halftime, if we're patient, you know, and the ball comes our way, we might win this one, and that's exactly what happened. So, Ivan, thanks a lot. You played great. No worries. Thanks, Parker. We'll take.